In this video, I want to show you the toy RC vehicle we're going to be using for the remainder of the series to build our robotics platform with. I also want to show you some differences and similarities between it and a hobbyist grade RC vehicle so you know what you're looking at. And I also want to show you how to further inspect it for any mechanical issues that it may have after you've gotten it home and maybe how to correct some of those. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, before I begin, I wanted to show you a few tools that I'm going to be using. I have a piece of foam core here that I've marked out in 6 and 3 inch increments along the front and down the side as well as this yellow ruler. This will be handy for uh, measuring things for you guys to show you on the video so you kind of know how big things are. It will be a little bit easier than using a tape measure like I did in the last video. I also have a pad of paper and a pencil if I need to note down anything. And this is a 6-in-1 screwdriver, very handy for a variety of purposes. And I have a small multi-tool set that has some jeweler screwdrivers, a set of regular screwdriver and socket driver along with bits, tweezers, wire cutters, and some needle nose pliers. Okay, first I wanted to show you some differences between a hobbyist grade RC vehicle and that of the uh, more toy grade RC vehicle that I'm going to be using for the rest of this series. Basically the differences between them is, well we have here, this is an old uh, Traxxas 1.5 or 0.15, something like that, old Traxxas uh, T-Max. And uh, this particular vehicle is, uh, well, it's, uh, I don't even know if it works. I actually picked this up yeah, as junk, more or less. Um, but, uh, <laughs> amazingly enough, um, but it has a, uh, it has a, this uh, body is uh, relatively removable. i got to fish this uh, antenna through so I can show you. But, uh, there we go. Basically the difference is, is and you can see this is, this is a relatively a well-used vehicle. Uh, we have here the, uh, we have here the, the nitrous, in, the nitrous, uh, nitro engine or whatever, uh, powered in a gas tank right here with a lid and such. And, um, there's a, there's a, can this, 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 this holds, this holds the receiver. It's got a couple servos here, one to control the uh, control this the 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 speed. Well, actually, it's got three servos, I should say. One 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 controls the steering, one controls the uh, one controls the brake and the speed of the engine, and the other uh, the other uh, controls um, I think a, like a gear shift or something on this particular vehicle. Um, one of the big things is is this thing is fairly heavy, and you can see it's fairly large. But uh, you know, you can't go just by size on, uh, you know, on RC vehicles. Uh, but uh, you can see that it has a lot of uh, well, metal components and everything. And it's really built extremely sturdy. You know, it's uh, you know, it's got a, you know, pretty much a metal chassis. You know, some, you know, there's some composite, and you know, it's a uh, it's completely four wheel drive and everything. But uh, yeah, you know, you can see you can see that it's uh well, it's almost about almost uh, almost 24 inches long and you know about 18 inches wide or so. Well, maybe not 18. Eh, call it 16, eh, 14, 14, 15, 16, something like that. This is a if I remember right, it's a one tenth scale vehicle. So uh, now let's uh, you know let me uh, you know let me show you what uh, the vehicle that we're going to be using uh, looks like and uh, you know and and what its differences are. So uh, let me put this away. Okay, well, here we have the vehicle that I'm going to be using for the rest of the series uh, to convert into a robot platform. You can see it, it kind of looks similar. And honestly, this kind of a vehicle you probably won't find very much out there. Uh, but it is somewhere halfway between what would be considered, you know, what I showed you before of toy RC vehicles and that uh, that hobby grade uh, T Max. Um, this vehicle is uh, has similar. It's got a you know it's got a similar type of body on it, and um, you know it's you know it's about the same size and everything. But the one thing is is that it's very lightweight, much more lightweight than that vehicle. 
it's electric powered. It's not a, it's not powered by an engine, although there are you know plenty of hobby grade RC vehicles nowadays that are powered by motors, you know electric motors. Um, but uh, what this has is it has much much it's a much much more you know plastic style vehicle. It's somewhere kind of in between. Like I said, it's kind of in between uh, the two. So um, you know let's uh, get to uh, taking this apart. And I can show you more on the inside and, you know, some other differences and whatnot. Okay, to start with, we need to uh, take this body off. And if you noticed on the, uh, on the T-Max, it had uh, some, it had some, uh, like, pin clips that came out of the thing. And they were attached to these uh, metal posts. On this particular vehicle, what it actually has is it has these uh, plastic clips here that just uh, kind of pop off. They're kind of like, almost like... I don't know, washers or something, but not quite. They just kind of pull off, and uh, there we go. All right, so uh, so uh, you can probably see that. Uh, I don't know, maybe maybe that's a better angle. So uh, you know, we just have to pull off four of these, and uh, we'll do that here. Again, these just uh, they're kind of like uh, friction fitted in a way. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not too bad considering, you know, considering uh, this vehicle. I, I actually found this vehicle at uh, Derp. Um, you know, just one of those things, you know, a lucky find. You know, so, you know, keep on a lookout for that. And, uh, you, know, you, you know, it's possible you might find one out there too. All right, so, uh, you know, so I'll just uh, set these off to the side here. Don't want to lose them. And then this body will just uh, slide right off, just like that. Alright, so you can see that there's a different difference between this and the T-Max. You know, there's uh, much less exposed. It's, like again, it's, it's all plastic basically. Again, everything, you know, these, these shocks, these shocks, you know, while they're, uh, you know, while they're fairly nice and everything, you know, they're not, uh, they're not actual shocks. Uh, there's no there's no damping fluid or anything like that in the T-Max. It actually had those shocks that are in it actually are real shocks. Um, in that particular one, it, they probably need to be rebuilt to be honest. But uh, but they're actual shocks. They have uh, oil in them and everything. You know, work just like a regular automobile's uh, shocks shocks and spring system. Um, in this, this is just you know basically you know just some springs. You know, it has some characteristics that are all that are that are similar, though, to uh, you know, to uh, hobby grade RC. Um, you know, it it has uh, it has uh, some uh, you know the the shocks can be repositioned in a com different positions to raise or lower the vehicle, um, change its stance, if you will, you know, to alter its driving conditions and whatnot, both front and back. It's it has uh, it has uh, it's uh, fully four wheel drive along with uh, you know front you can see here it has this uh, shaft that extends all the way from the rear to the front um, that uh, drives the that drives the 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 whole the whole front and we, front and rear, rear wheels you can see if I rotate the shaft like that that all four re wheels rotate um, front and back uh, differential you can see uh, you know if I show it here you can see that. Uh, Front, you know, this uh, rear differential wheels rotate just like that. It's the same here, and uh, you know, if I hold one of these wheels and rotate it, um, well, I can't, <laughs> I can't do that quite easily. Here, well, this is what I'll do. I'll uh, put it on this, put it on this uh, mat here, and then uh, rotate it. You can see it transfers the power to the front, uh, just like it should. You know, because with one wheel and with one wheel unpowered, it's going to be transferring the power. Up to the front and to the front wheels. Um, it has a it has a small motor underneath here, um, and then inside here are you know what are the control electronics. Okay, so let's open her up, see what we can find. Uh, well, first gotta get the right bit here because all of these uh, all of these uh, screws that are on here are all uh, Phillips head screws. Now some of these. Uh, you can see they're kind of small, so I'm actually going to, uh, instead of using this larger screwdriver, at least for now, I'm going to actually uh, use uh, uh, my large jeweler bit screwdriver. It'll give me a little bit more control and uh, won't strip the heads or anything like that of the, uh, 
of the uh, screws or whatnot. So uh, you know, so yeah, let's uh, let me uh, we'll first take off uh, we'll first take off this cover and uh, see what uh, see what's all under under it. And you can just uh, do it like this. And one thing that you want to do again is uh, save your screws and. Uh, as I noted before, put them back in, uh, you know, in another video, I noted that uh, the best thing to do is put them back in their spots so that um, you don't lose them. So uh, we'll do that here and real quickly, real quick like. Uh, take these all out. And the other thing is, is uh, you know, sometimes uh, if you have to uh, set the screws aside or something like that, try to keep them all together. You know, in this case, uh, you know some of the, some of these uh, some of these toy toy and other RC vehicles, the uh, screws they sometimes they all tend to be the same, but in a lot of cases they're not. They can be different lengths, they can be different widths, uh, different thread count, any number of things. Um, so you know that's something uh, that's something to keep in mind. Um, on this particular vehicle, most not all of them, but most of the screws are relatively the same. Um, so you know, but. Uh, you know, the best practice is whenever you remove stuff is to, you know, like uh, just just put them all back in place. So uh, we'll do that here in a second. You can see under here that uh, there's a uh, you know the circuit board that uh, controls the vehicle. Um, there's uh, this uh, this uh, black. Whoa, that is not what I want to do. Okay, there we go. Almost. Okay. That's all right. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay. There we go. You know, got to be uh, kind of careful here. So you know, I'm just putting these back in, back into their, uh, back into their spots. Uh, like I said, but uh, you know, got to be kind of careful. You know, since all these screws are the same, I'm not necessarily putting each screw that goes where they need to go exactly where they need to go. You know, and of course, if they were different, that'd be you know. Obviously, I'd want to put them back, back properly. Um, but uh, you know, to uh, to show some things, some some other things here. Like I said, we have the uh, we have the uh, circuit board here. Right here, you can see there's a double row of solder things here. That's probably some kind of a controller IC for uh, for the uh, receiver. <clears throat> uh, we've got. Uh, Got a bunch of uh, different wires here coming from the uh, from what I believe is uh, some kind of like uh, the steering actuator, and then we got the two main wires here going going uh, back to the uh, going back to the uh, drive motor back here, and some wires here that are connecting up to a small switch and going into the uh, battery compartment to uh, run the power to the to the to the uh, to the vehicle itself. Um, this here is the antenna wire. Um, you saw it was uh, snaked through this uh, through this uh, hole here, uh, this hole right here, um, when I took it off. Uh, so uh, yeah, you know this is you know this this you know this is what this looks like. You can see it's relatively you know relatively basic. Uh, we've got this drive shaft that I pointed out earlier that's running front to back. Uh, it uh, it's, it's a metal drive shaft. Um, fits into these uh, two uh, plastic shop things here that are going into some gearboxes front and back. Um, we can uh, investigate uh, <clears throat> what's underneath here. Uh, this, uh, we'll, we'll uh, start with this gearbox first. All right, so uh, we're gonna take off these, uh, take out these uh, screws that uh, cover this uh, uh, motor, uh, this motor uh, cover plate thing here. This uh, piece of plastic is mainly here to uh, keep you from touching the, there's some metal fins, you can see right here, oh, let me, uh, you can see uh, there's some metal fins, these are, it's uh, actually like a heat sink for the, uh, for the motor here, and uh, that uh, cover is meant to keep you from touching it, because, well, probably gets hot and you can burn yourself, I'm not sure. Um, so, you know, to get this uh, shaft out, we need to take this cover off of this uh, rear gearbox here, so we'll go ahead and do that. And uh, set these screws aside. Sometimes you want to 
kind of put your finger down in there, you know, hold the screw next next and on to the jeweler's screwdriver and get kind of tricky to in order to pull it out of the hole. And then I just want to grab it. Uh, there we go. And just keep doing this. Eventually we'll get them all out. And I believe that's the last one on this uh on this cover here. And uh we'll just lift the whole thing out like that. And uh you can see here that uh those are the those are the um you know I'll rotate it so it's a little bit easier, but uh you can see those are the uh those are the gears that uh, drive the wheels. Uh, got this large gear here. It was driven off of the motor, a uh, small pinion on the motor down down in here. And then there's some bevel gears that drive this front shaft to the front to give power to the front. And then a couple of a uh, couple of spur gears over here that deliver the power down into the uh, gearbox on the uh, for the uh, rear 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 uh, wheels. Um, the other thing I you know pull up, want to point out if I can. Uh, if I can uh, show you guys, is uh, you know right here, this uh, this uh, well that's a uh, yeah can't really uh, let me see if I can get a uh, something a little bit better that uh, yeah right here uh, this uh, this this uh, thing right here the, this the, the the shafts that go from each other are called half shafts they uh, they run from they run from the the uh, power output of the gearbox on there's one there's ones on the front and runs on the rear. And deliver the power directly, you know, to the wheels. And uh, these uh, half shafts are kind of like they call them, you know, you see them called dog bones because that's what they're kind of shaped like. If you take, you know, if you took this apart and you took that shaft out, it looks like a dog bone. It's a shaft only about so long, and it has a, a ball on each end that has some pins, and those rotate into these uh, sockets that are connected to the wheels and to the output of the uh, gearbox and it allows it uh, as it rotates it it acts as basically a universal joint or you know in, in a real in a real uh, large vehicle they're called um, CVT joints CV joints I'm sorry I'm thinking I'm thinking CVT transmission I'm sorry uh, they're called CV joints uh, constant velocity joints um, and uh, this is like you know kind of like a you know, call it a low rent or a low cost version of that. Um, you know, in in other vehicles, they actually use actual um, they actually use uh, like universal joints um, instead of instead of dog bones. But uh, in a low cost like this, you know, low cost car like this, these dog bones they serve the purpose and they work well. So um, yeah, so this uh, this shaft here, we've got uh, we've got uh, you know this this gear. It'll just uh, lift out like that, and we can take this gear off. And set it aside for now, and then this uh, shaft can just uh, slip out of this uh, front thing. I'm going to have to hold it kind of because this front thing actually will come out of this gearbox, um, and you know, and so we have the shaft right there. Okay, so uh, you know, you can see this. Uh, you can see this uh, shaft or this uh, this uh, main drive shaft, the one that went from uh, the front to the rear. Um, this uh, main drive shaft, you can see that it's uh, just a little bit, uh, just a little bit over, uh, just a little bit over, um, well, a little bit over, well, I guess a little bit over nine inches long, I guess, yeah. Um, and uh, you know, that's a, uh, you know, kind of gives you an idea of the size of this vehicle a little bit. Um, so uh, what we'll do is we'll put this, uh, we'll put this um, bevel gear back into place. Just uh, sets down in there. It has a little plastic bushing as a bearing, and then we'll uh, then we'll put the uh, we'll put the uh, gearbox cover back in place, put the screws back on, and uh, you know button her up, and she'll be uh, she'll be uh, ready for a uh, thing. Now now we have we had to remove like I said I had to remove the shaft you know so that we could get to this uh, circuit board later. So we'll be leaving it off for now. We don't need we don't need it necessarily for uh, anything until we get this whole thing you know completely built. All right, so uh, we're just uh, finishing up uh, putting these uh, screws back in place uh, for this uh, <laughs> for this uh, for this uh, gearbox cover, and uh, I like to uh, 
I like to uh, use a jeweler's screwdriver for this because uh, it allows me to control the torque a little bit better rather than a, a larger screwdriver which uh, you can actually strip the threads out of this plastic you know um, so uh, just getting these uh, back in place and the last one there and there we are now uh, now uh, let's uh, you know I wanted to uh, pull off something else and uh, investigate something else and that's uh, that's uh, this cover right here and uh, that's covering uh, what appears to be, or actually is, the uh, the uh, steering actuator. Um, it's uh, it's using four wires. I'm not exactly sure why, but uh, you know, we'll uh, get in there later on and investigate that and find out what those four wires actually do. Uh, but first, we need to uh, remove this cover, and uh, you know, just see what's going on underneath there. So we got to remove these uh, two screws here that were holding on the uh, the uh, cover for the you know for this whole cover. Um, it's actually a, a double type of thing, and this is kind of an example of uh, what I was, you know, what I kind of hinted at in the um, in the uh, mattress inflator videos that I had. That uh, sometimes you gotta, you know, you want to put screws back, but you need to, you, you need to, um, you know, sometimes you can't do it and put them in in their place to keep from losing them because in order to take it apart further, you've got to take them out. Well, this is a case here. In order to take this cover off, even though it was holding that cover over there on, I had to remove them because it's actually holding this smaller cover on as well. So uh, we'll remove these uh, four screws. You can see these uh, these screws here. Uh, you know they don't match. Uh, they don't match those front screws. So you know got to keep them. You know kind of uh, kind of uh, separate there. Um, you know, kind of keep uh, keeping the, you know, f you know what what goes where. Um, not too uh, not too difficult. Not dealing with a lot of screws here. So, uh, you know, just set those aside, and uh, then this cover, I believe, is not going to come off. Okay. All right. So I'm wondering if maybe this cover might be uh, actually attached to this front gearbox cover. So. You know, it might be all one unit here, so uh, you know we'll take off these uh, take off these other screws. You know, I mean, you know, as long as we don't uh, lose anything, <laughs> you know, it'll be all it'll be all okay. You know, so uh, we'll take this all. You know, take this off. Mm, yeah, that one's that one's kind of torqued down a little bit. <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes uh, sometimes uh, what you want to do, you know, if you don't want to, you know, if you don't want to. You know, we're worried about stripping heads or whatnot by using a larger screwdriver, you know, to put a little bit more torque. Sometimes what you can do is these jeweler screwdrivers, you know, they've got this little, you know, spinny thing up top. You can set it on the, you know, set it in the screw and then take a pair of pliers and grip the shaft and rotate it that way. And uh, that'll give you a little bit more torque and uh, hopefully it'll be enough to, you know, bust the uh, screws free, you know, where, where it's needed. Most of the time you don't have to do that. Um, but it's, you know, it's a handy little uh, thing to, uh, you know, handy little thing to know. So uh, we've got all these screws out of this uh, gearbox cover, and uh, now let's see what happens. Okay, it is still on there for some reason. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm not going to force it because, you know, again, you don't ever want to force something, you know, if, you know, if you don't know why it's not coming off. Uh, but uh, I'm kind of curious why this other gearbox, this gearbox cover, isn't uh, wanting to come off either. You know, because one would think that there was enough. Uh... Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to have to be something to investigate as to why that gearbox, that cover, doesn't want to come off. That is very, very curious. Um, but. Uh... But um, yeah, that's uh, it's uh, it's definitely not wanting to come off, and I'm not exactly sure why. Okay, well, I was uh, trying to uh, trying to trying to explain this. I'm trying to get this uh, trying to get this uh, gearbox or get this uh, cover off, and it really doesn't want to come off. Um, and the reason why, and I investigated this. Is I uh, ended up taking the uh, the the front bumper off, and uh, there were uh, five screws holding it on. Got them right here, holding it on to the bottom. And looking at this, there's actually a couple other screws 
one here and one over next to it that seems to be holding on to this gearbox. And actually it seems like it's holding the whole front end on. I'm not absolutely certain. What I do know is, is that I don't want to go any deeper into this because, uh, you know, it's one of those things, this is another thing about toy RC vehicles is versus hobby grade, is that sometimes they're not really made to be taken apart very far. Um, I could go deeper into this, but for right now it's not really necessary. I know this thing has four wires, that's probably all I need to know unless it's not working, but I believe it'll work and everything. Everything else seems to be hooked up fine. So I'm not going to uh, delve any deeper in it because it's not going to gain me much of anything other than maybe an understanding of how this uh, thing works. Uh, you know, if I need to later, then I will. So let me uh, go ahead and you know put this, uh, put these, uh, put these uh, screws and other things back into place, and uh, then um, you know then we'll uh, you know then I'll uh, you know talk about this a little bit further. Much does it for the uh, mechanics of this uh, of this RC vehicle there's not really much to it on you know as far as the mechanicals you know without really really diving in and you know s you know tearing this thing apart and we really don't need to because there's no uh, you know there's nothing there's no damage to it there's nothing wrong with it or anything um, you know if it was like one of those things uh, you know if we needed to you know say you know the steering servo doesn't work or something maybe we could you know you know bodge in a uh, <laughs> You know, some guy like a real server or something. Um, you know, but other than that, you know, it's it's in good shape. Uh, so next time, you know, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at this uh, circuit board. You know, remove the screws that's holding it down and flip it over, take a look at it. Maybe, you know, maybe we'll uh, figure out, you know, what this uh, IC is in here and, you know, see if that'll help us at all figuring out what these four wires on this, uh, on this steering actuator do, you know. So, uh... We can uh, get you know get that out of the way, and uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is that uh, this body and uh, whatnot is really nice that we can a attach some staff standoffs to it, and uh, you know mount our mount our uh, mount our platform on top to uh, to allow us to add our electronics and whatnot to it to uh, turn it into an actual robot. So uh, there's that as well. Okay, well, thank you for watching this video. In future videos, I'm going to show you how to interface with RC vehicles onboard electronics so you can control its motor and steering actuator. I'll also show you how to build a platform on top so you can add your own electronics, such as a microcontroller or other sensors, to build out the robotics platform. So, until then, remember, keep calm and keep junking. Thank you. All right, well, that does it for now. See you guys later. Take care.